Although sometimes there can be controversies between Total Drama fans all over the world, on this one thing we can all agree. Drama Rama sucks. The kids show appeared in October of 2018 and was considered a total failure from the start. The OG fans hated it. And even the little kids didn't find it enjoyable. And they like everything. Basically, Drama Rama did to Total Drama what Anakin did to the Republic. Destroyed it from the inside. But why was this spin-off so hated by the fans? Why did the reputation of Total Drama almost end definitively with it? And most importantly, why the f was this thing created in the first place? Stay tuned because in today's episode, we will discuss the causes behind the failure of Drama Rama. For those of you who don't know what Drama Rama is, here is a quick explanation. Remember when shows like Scooby Doo, Tom and Jerry, or Looney Tunes made a version for little kids? The team at Fresh TV thought it would be a great idea to copy them. It wasn't. The cast was pretty much the same except that it was formed of toddlers. Well, that's exactly what Drama Rama is. A version much more family friendly and targeted towards kids. It's understandable if you've never heard of Drama Rama, because unlike other Total Drama seasons, this show had very little promotion for its first season. But after Total Drama World Tour, Fresh TV really started to promote its shows less and less. One interesting aspect is that, unlike other shows who kept their original cast or made new characters special for that show, Drama Rama added a character from a different series. Jude is a character from the show 16, and he is voiced by Christian Potenza. We don't know if the addition of Jude was a form of marketing for 16 or an attempt to make Drama Rama more interesting, but what we know for sure is that it didn't work. This season really took character derailment to another level. Besides this, they didn't even bring back the whole OG cast. Instead, they brought just 11 of them, and they dressed Chef like a middle crisis businessman. But trust me, these are the least of these show's problems. So with that in mind, we can start our discussion. First of all, let's do a brief analysis of the evolution of the series from the time of its appearance in 2007 until the time of the Dramarama launch. In 2007, Cartoon Network had a variety of amazing, action-packed shows like Transformers, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, and Ben 10. But all of them lacked one element, realism. They all presented worlds and characters that we all knew deep down that we would never see them in real life. That was until Total Drama came, of course. Besides the fact that the characters presented teenage stereotypes that we saw daily around us, Total Drama took things to a much more complex level, even from the storyline point of view. If in the other series on Cartoon Network, it was about the morality of the heroes versus the evil of the villains, in Total Drama, things were not so simple. Although there were villains here too, in the case of many characters, things were a little more abstract, which made the characters much more realistic and iconic. So one of the things that made Total Drama so popular was the authenticity of the series. And that authenticity continued during six seasons until Fresh TV decided it was a good idea to throw all the progress out the window and copy the trend of that time. And we all know that those were hard times for our favorite series. Because not only Total Drama, but also other shows like Looney Tunes and Teen Titans were turned into cheap copies for a much younger audience. And you know the irony? Not even the children like Dramarama. And this leads us to the next point of our discussion. The fact that this spin-off was doomed from day one. But let us explain. Although Teen Titans Go and Baby Looney Tunes disappointed old fans, these shows were successful because they tried to be based on a single idea. For example, Baby Looney Tunes was a very family-friendly and innocent show that instantly captivated young children. On the other hand, Teen Titans Go made it clear from the first episode that it does not take itself seriously. It was that style of cartoon where all the characters could die in one episode and be perfectly okay in the next. Unfortunately, although Drama Rama wanted to captivate an audience younger, it tried at the same time to keep the old fans of the series. This resulted in a disastrous mix from two points of view. First of all, if we see it from the point of view of the OG Total Drama fans, apart from the same characters and some adult jokes specific to the series, Drama Rama no longer had anything to do with the original series. In this spin-off, there were no more challenges, no more tense situations, and most importantly, there was no drama. Come on, Gwen. You don't want to fall behind. In 
Instead, everything that brought Total Drama to the heights of success was replaced with some ordinary elements from some children's shows. As for the children's point of view, although for those of a young age, the action in Dramarama may seem somewhat interesting, it is filled with many adult jokes and moments that are specific for the entertainment of the OG fans which spoils the children's experience of watching the series. I mean, come on. In which other kids show do you see creepy dudes smelling kids farts? That sounds really bad, but it really happened. Nah, jig tripping. Hey, yo, what the fuck? In case you guys didn't know, there's an episode called Total Eclipse of the Fart. The name just tells the whole story. So by analyzing this point of view, we can say that Dramarama has not only disappointed us, but also the new generations as well. Other elements that made the rest of Total Drama season so popular and that were missing from Dramarama were the continuity of the episodes, character development, and unexpected plot twists. So let's take them one by one. In Total Drama, each episode was directly correlated with the previous ones. So if you skipped a few episodes, even if you could clearly see who was eliminated, you would miss some interactions and important moments that explained the tension or appropriation between certain characters. This offered an evolution of both the characters themselves and the relationships between them during the show. Besides the storyline, there were also the plot twists that gave that special total drama style that we all came to love. Unfortunately, Dramarama lacked not one, not two, but all these elements. Plus, the action was quite boring. There were literally episodes when all the big deal was that a kid was naked and the others tried to put clothes on him. However, there was an interesting episode with clones made on a strange Xerox. I've seen this somewhere before. <laughs> Not very original after all. You're not going to make me partner up with him, are you? So, yeah. What resulted? Well, a kind of failed copy of shows like Teen Titans Go. At least in the series Teen Titans Go, even if the action was not correlated with that of the previous episodes, the humor and other aspects were taken to the extreme to maintain the episode's interest. The thing is that every series makes mistakes. We all remember The Amazing Spider-Man 2 or the original Justice League. But the important thing is that Fresh TV learned from its past and released a true piece of art this year. And what is coming next seems to be even more awesome. In fact, we made a whole video about the upcoming season. Go check it out. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. See you next time with another video.